Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of the Social Liability Podcast. This is your host, the Razgrees, with my co-host, the Buck Grundle, and our special guest from the Mount Moon Crew, Sadar. Hello, Sadar. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, well, now she's lying. So, hi, hi Sadar. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, Buck, um, how you been this week, man? I, I, hear, I hear you got some new interesting laws there in the uh, Grand commonwealth of virginia yeah uh the commonwealth of virginia has just decided to become the next state in the union to legalize marijuana now is it going to be medical and, or recreational um since i would qualify for either or all i did was just really not i didn't dig too far into it i just figured that the second they said legal weed uh that my crippled ass would qualify and that was it so weed what I, huh? what I, huh? I, weed? I, I, you started doing wheelies <laughs> you started doing wheelies <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a, that's essentially how it was i mean like i almost got caregiver katie to break out the freaking olive oil to put on the kitchen floor and start <laughs> drifting like i was just, just like yeah jeez uh well I, I mean here in the um i'm not gonna say great state i'll just say in the state of oklahoma we got more pot than you can shake a stick at. Uh, more pot dealers. And pot stores and pot memorabilia and just straight up pot. You know, I, I had to go into a, a guy's house one day to survey some damage that he was um, claiming. And uh, I, I walked into this dude's bedroom and there's just plants everywhere. And he's like, eh, whatever. You know, I'm literally there as a government official. Dude didn't give a shit. And it just boggled my mind. And I was like, are, are you sure? <laughs> just didn't care. I don't know if I would care. I would probably still care. But I'm, st I'm just elated. Well, Buck, we have some uh, interesting stories from all over the internet, because, of course, with the Social Liability Podcast, I normally said this at the beginning, but I got all flustered, and I really screwed up the intro, but this is the show where we talk about people that violate the social contracts that we all agree to live by, and we got some doozies this week, all of which have a, a ring of felonious activity to them. Douchebaggery, would you say? felonious douchebaggery unfortunately we already used that title for an episode <laughs> <laughs> so uh we had to go with something else for this one but let's start with what is that uh news for jacksonville kimberly kessler tasered after throwing feces on officers at jail i i've lovely i've never had it happen and i was inside of a jail for seven years working on the block for five you were there for about the same so, amount of time. I was there for seven years and I worked the blocks the entire time. And I never, I, I had an inmate like threaten me a couple of times with it, but I mean, that's, that's about as far as it went. Like somebody going, Oh yeah, I'm going to do this. And me just being extra careful every time I walk by that dude's cell. But Apparently, no, I, I, I never, I never actually had that happen. Sans occur. Yeah. Apparently, this person had more follow through than you guys encountered. <laughs> well, a woman awaiting trial in the murder, uh, I'm sorry, in the murder of her Nassau County Salon co owner is now facing charges after authorities say she threw feces on corrections officers at the jail. Kimberly Kessler was hit with a stun gun during the incident Monday. Okay, let's stop right there. And what is wrong with this sentence? Uh, hit with a stun gun. Yes. Anytime that the news gets their hands on any, anything involving a taser or an EBID, it's always a stun gun. There's no such thing as a stun gun, folks. Stun gun was a brand and doesn't exist anymore. And so was it an EBID? Now, an EBID is the one where you take it in your hand and you go... <laughs> and the other a taser is the one that shoots the wires out and goes zappy, zappy, zappy. Wait a minute. A layman wants to interject here and... Is it possible that the term stun gun has just entered the vernacular in the way other, um, don't don't look at me like that, other name brands become synonymous with whatever it is that they produce? No. And I can tell you that for a fact, because there was one time when we were working in said jail, 
um, for some reason, I got voluntold that I was getting interviewed by the local newspaper because they were interviewing just people with interesting jobs. They wanted to interview a corrections person. Well, they did, they couldn't get Buck for some reason. I think Buck literally ran across the parking lot to get away from this guy, and the warden grabbed me and shoved me into a conference room with him. So you're like the poor man's Buck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think so. I think I am the poor man's Buck in this case. Um, oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I sat down with this guy, and... He so butchered and misquoted everything I said, and it was ridiculous. But one of the things he said in the article, and I can find it right now, I can post it on my social media, I'm sure. The guy refers to, you know, what kind of things are you trained in? And I said, well, we're trained in use of the EBID. Uh, we're trained in use of pepper spray, uh, the pepper ball guns. Uh, we also, you know, we're trained in ass batons and everything. Like and I went down through the whole bloody thing. Uh, talk about PATH and OCAT and all this other stuff. This guy writes in there, he's proficient in the use of the stun baton. <laughs> I remember that now. Oh, my gosh. It's like he was watching a, like a, a demolition man that night as he was writing the article and decided that he was going to in, 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 inter, just introduce the stun baton into modern oh, times. Oh, man. I, I remember the next time we were at shift briefing right after that happened. Uh, one of the uh, one of the shift commanders just stood up there and went, and apparently now we have stun batons. Is that correct, Officer Raz? <laughs> and we all just we all just sat there and shook our heads. We we're we we're just like all everyone in solidarity. Like we all knew that this was this was a gross paraphrase, a really bad one. Stun baton. Yeah, mm. that was bad. <laughs> so screw the news they don't know what they're talking about moving on authorities say corrections officer asked Kessler to move to another cell so hers could be sanitized she took feces she had saved in a styrofoam cup and threw it at them the officers then stunned her you know what shout out for being able to catch it in a cup because it, I think we've probably all peed in cups and that's hard enough I don't but pee in a cup if, you've if never Buck, peed in a cup have you ever peed in a cup all right, I've had children. Nope. I've been pregnant, so I've peed in a cup a lot, and that's hard enough. But shitting in a styrofoam cup has got to be like Olympic style degree, right there. Of I mean, what, are you shitting in the cup, well, or maybe you shit and scoop it up with a cup? That's what I was uh, thinking there. I would, okay. The toilet. To well, just right. now, now, just just to, just for context and perspective. Inmates actually have toilets inside of their cells if they are actually in cells. So, you know, this this is a very viable assumption that that somebody might just you know be able to pop a squat into a cup. Like, you know, remember, Sadar hasn't hasn't been inside the grueling, you know, the depths of the of the prisons like well, we have. Then I want to just register a complaint with what is this uh, Kansas or Kentucky? Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Um, they really should have specified how the feces got in the cup. Because I, I don't a, care about the how no, the feces. I as a I news consumer want to know. Like, I don't care how Miss Kimberly Kessler bent a biscuit in a cup. <laughs> I want to know what what the hell they were telling her about getting stunned with their their stun guns and. Uh. We're focusing on all the wrong details of this article. How about we just let you proceed, man? <laughs> Well, here's the kicker. It was not the first time she was reported to have thrown feces while being a dis disruption in the jail. Corrections officers have been telling the judge during pretrial hearings about previous incidents. Quit giving this bitch cops! <laughs> <laughs> Defense lawyers are trying to get the physical evidence thrown out. They saved the shit! <laughs> Or the shitty cup. It's in a bag somewhere. There's a shitty cup in a bag somewhere. <laughs> We're waiting for her to get released so they can light it on fire on her porch. Oh. <laughs> Kessler is charged with killing Cummings, her co-worker, at the Yuli Hair Salon. Cummings' body was never found, but the Nassau County Sheriff's Office and Florida Department of Law Enforcement found evidence that blood at the salon was cleaned up and blood was found on some of Kessler's clothing. Holy crap! <laughs> So this criminal mastermind was able to get rid of the body, but not 
<laughs> She's still flinging poo on people. <laughs> but with the help of the FBI, items of interest in the case were found in a Georgia landfill. Holy crap! Literally. I Well, I feel kind of bad about laughing about this now. <laughs> Kessler, who... I don't. <laughs> Kessler, has been, who's been going on episodes of starvation and binge eating, was just 74 pounds when she appeared before the judge in October. The judge found Kessler's behavior was not driven by mental illness, but a personality disorder, and she has been deemed competent to stand trial. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So being a bitch is now just a fucking personality disorder? When the hell did that happen? Well, funny you should say that, because the first comment in this article is, send her to a vet. They know how to handle crazy dogs. <laughs> Well, at least when she's, you know, starving herself, she probably won't have much poo to throw at people. No, that just means it's soft serve. Ah, uh, who knows? I bet you she's channeling the uh, spirit of Jane Goodall as we speak. Oh, jeez. Well, speaking of pot, as we were earlier, this is an interesting article out of Ireland. <laughs> Landlord evicts tenant for growing cannabis, then takes over his operation. A carpenter who evicted tenants from his property after he found out they had been set up a cannabis grow house, only to then take over the operation himself, has received two, a two-year suspended sentence. John Sheehan, is, and is there a more Irish name than that? I mean, seriously. I just, I, I just think this whole thing is wonderful. You know, guys busting a greenhouse for pot on the Emerald Isle. Like, that's just... Hmm. Well, I, I got a story that's actually happened to me. True. Proceed. True story. True story. It actually happened. Uh, but, well, John Sheehan pled guilty at a Cork Circuit criminal court, I'll say that five times fast, to possessing cannabis for the sale or supply and to cultivating cannabis without a license at his home in some town. Art glass. Art glass? Uh, okay, let's go with that. Uh Back in October of 99, 1919. 2019! Oh my god! I'm not even the one drinking. Soda. Uh, Detective Garda Will Hosford said the investig investigating has uncovered a sophisticated cannabis grow house with lights and a watering system set up in a shipping container in the backyard of Mr. Sheehan's house. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be that sophisticated. They discovered 23 mature cannabis plants with a street value of 18,400 euros. I'm assuming that's euros. Is that euros? That looks yes. like euros. Uh, in the container. They also found 253 grams of cannabis herb with a street value of 5,066 euros. D did they really like determine that it had a value of 5,066 euros? I'm sure it's just math. Like they know what one, one gram you know, is. Why not just say five thousand? Yeah. Or over five thousand? Okay, well. Or five thousand fifty. The author obviously wants to be precise. You know, there's value. In I precision. think he just wants to sound like he knows more than what he knows is what it is. Probably. <laughs> Mr. Sheehan made full admissions after being interviewed. He took responsibility for the grow house, which was set up in three separate rooms in the container, with the third room containing the mature plants. Uh, the detective said that Sheehan told them that he had rented out the house to a Polish tenant, only to discover they had set up the grow house operation in the container. He evicted his tenants and burned the 33 plants that had been cultivated the plot thickens. However, sometime after this, he was approached by a man who offered him 5,000 euros to resume the grow operation and produce a crop. <laughs> As he was under financial pressure at the time, he accepted the offer and began growing another crop of plants. Uh, Sheehan told the... Whatever that word is for the paper, I don't know, I can't pronounce it. It's, it's Gaelic or something. That the crop seized was the second harvest and that he had already made 5,000 euros from the first crop. Right on. I mean... Pays better score. than soybeans. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, he, it, it, long story short, he's going to have to make restitution costs and everything else. But, I mean, is, is 5,000... Let's just, let's just say dollars. Let's get, take the euros out of it. I'm not sure what the exchange rate is right now. Um, but let's just say it's $5,000. Is that a lot of weed, Buck? Yeah. 
Like, yeah. Like oh how, yeah. Like how much weed is five thousand? Oh geez, I mean like, let's see here, two hundred. It's two hundred for an ounce. Sixteen, uh, thirty-two hundred bucks would be a pound. Uh, thirty-two hundred dollars would be a pound. Uh, about a pound and a half. That's got to be a lot of plants. That's got to be a lot of plants. Would you say a shipping container full? It'd have to be a shipping container full of plants. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, you know, a lot goes into that. You know, is it is it is it dried and cured buds? Is it just buds? Is it the whole plant? But I mean, like thirty two plants, you could definitely get like, you know, a, a good size container full of a uh, product in there. Yeah. <laughs> the the article said like practically nothing about the fact that he stole the operation setup you know we we don't have the greatest sources here on the social liability podcast you're relying on one mildly stoned cripple to uh to you know comb the uh the subreddits to find the articles so i you know i i will take partial responsibility but Again, we don't really vet these out, so we can't. We we just try to make chicken salad out of chicken shit when you know, it comes to the, these. The thing is, though, the thing is, though, Buck posts the majority of the articles in our group chat. I, I do sometimes. You're supposed to be the one that vets them and determines if they're good or not. Because we don't read them. Oh, I I didn't realize I was supposed to vet everything. <laughs> I'm just commenting on the fact the article was perfectly great, and I'm not complaining about the article. But I'm just saying that the the title was kind of uh, misleading. That was not the main point of the article. The main point of the article mm. was uh, illegal weed operation busted. Yeah. And and by the way, the shipping container was something that his former tenants had brought in and set up. And he was like, "Well, it's set up. I might as well use it. If somebody's <laughs> going to give me five grand to use it, well, if someone gives you lemons, you might as well grow some weed." Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, I can see what you're saying, Sadar, because these the a lot of these guys writing and posting these articles just do this shit for clickbait. And you know, there's nothing there's nothing material to the headline in that article. Like it makes one very small mention about how it used to belong to somebody else. Like I personally would have loved to have heard a little bit more about that too. What happened to the Polish dude? I wanna know like did he find a exactly. new place to live? I just, I, I'm sorry, guys. I just want so much more than what we have, I guess, to offer. You are about <laughs> ready to inherit yourself a job if you don't stop. <laughs> like that, that sounds like quiet. some. Yeah, you're 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 starting to sound like somebody who might be able to improve upon this, and th- that's that's that's. I, I boy, if click- you start. Ma- if you start making that assertion, I'm going to start getting you in on the, uh, you know. I've been clickbaited into the podcast. That's ex- that's what's happened. You guys clickbaited me into the podcast. <laughs> like, come sit in for a day. It'll be fun. Yep, it and you'll live for the job. <laughs> well, have you two been following this Matt Gates stuff that's been coming out lately? Yes, I have. No. So. What do you know about the Matt Gates stuff so far? Let, let's say to give us a little bit of a rundown. Well, I know that he's super popular. He um, finally found a date for prom in his mid thirties, right? <laughs> I've never <laughs> heard of this asshole. <laughs> really? The the guy from Florida, like? Not even. This is the first time I've heard his name. Okay. I can't wait. Well, Vanity Fair. You've seen his forehead. You've seen Sorry. his forehead. Um, so Vanity Fair is reporting this now. Vanity Fair isn't exactly like the, the most like uh, hardest hitting the hardest hitting news source out there but they do come up with some of the best headlines it says report matt gates upgraded from just fucked to royally fucked <laughs> now is that in reference to his dates or... uh, <laughs> let's uh, find which actually would you do the honors uh, okay Since the news broke that the Justice Department is investigating Representative Matt Gates for allegedly paying women for sex and separately sleeping with a minor and transporting her across state lines, things have gotten 
exponentially worse for the congressman in a uh, near bi-weekly basis. <laughs> for instance, last Friday, we noted that the Republican lawmaker was well and truly fucked in light of Venmo transactions showing Getz had paid $900 to his accused sex trafficker friend, Joel Greenberg, which Greenberg proceeded to send uh, to three young women. On Tuesday, though, new reporting indicates that he has been upgraded to exponentially royally fucked. I want to keep reading. You got, you guys yeah, go, well, by reading. all means, go, keep reading. Go, uh, yeah. <laughs> Proceed. I mean, Proceed. They, I mean, this is just entertaining in and of itself. <laughs> they, they, know, they sure know how to rope somebody in. All right. The New York Times reported that Greenberg, Gates' close friend, who was first indicted last year and has now been charged on 33 counts, including sex trafficking of a minor, bribery, stalking, and defrauding the Paycheck Protection Program, is said to have been providing investigators with information on an array of topics, including Mr. Get, uh, Getz's activities for several months now. Ooh. Okay, L let me just let me just let me just point this out. A, a lot of times when you're when you're doing charging documents, you throw everything you can at a guy, and because you, you know you're going to plead down most likely, especially in federal court charges. In federal court, you're you're guilty. It's just a matter of what degree of guilty. But if you're gonna if you're gonna charge somebody with 33 counts, including sex trafficking of a minor, bribery, stalking, why are you throwing on defrauding the Paycheck Protection Program? That's like saying, well, he committed a murder and he jaywalked. Well, hey, what? Just you know what? They busted Al Capone for tax evasion. Just because he he uh, murdered somebody doesn't mean he shouldn't. We should ignore the lesser crimes. Just saying. I mean, guilty is guilty is guilty. Aha! I. <laughs> you had an argument with us earlier about alleged crimes. <laughs> well, this guy apparently has been cooperating with the feds for quite a while, so he's got to know that they've got him on something. Well, let's continue. Uh, Greenberg, who is currently in jail after violating the terms of his bail, report reportedly told prosecutors that he and the congressman had encounters with women who were given cash or gifts in exchange for sex. According to two people familiar with the matter, the DOJ is also investigating if the two men had sex with a 17-year-old girl. It's not clear if Greenberg, a former Seminole County, Florida tax collector, has offered up any information on that front. So we got a stoolie. <laughs> he got a snitch. <laughs> You know, he could have easily avoided a lot of these charges if he had not used Venmo. He should have used Cash App. That's all I'm saying on that one. If he would have just used a different use, a different method of payment, payment, he'd have been fine. At least on those things. Oh, God. So, how does the royally fucking continue? A spokesman for Getz has insisted the GOP lawmaker did nothing wrong, telling the Times Congressman Getz has never paid for sex and suggested that Greenberg was trying to ensnare innocent people in his troubles. Yeah, they're just throwing pussy over the fence at this guy. That's why you sent Greenberg $600. That $900. $900. Anyway. Using but... Venmo. Should have used Cash App. You use WhatsApp instead of Messenger, don't you? Nope. Okay. I don't, uh, nope. Continue. Let's continue. Last week, the Daily Beast reported that Getz and Greenberg were both connected on Venmo on, uh, to several women, like one of the free who received the portion of the $900 marked for tuition and school, and at least one was paid by Greenberg with taxpayer funds via a government credit card. Now, I'd just like to point out that I once wrote a check to my baby brother, and I'm pretty sure in the memo line I wrote penis enlargement surgery because I'm an asshole like that. Did he cash it? Well, yeah. Of course he did. <laughs> but, I didn't cash that shit, too. But... <laughs> I'm pointing out the obvious. I think we all know you can write the purpose for payment, whatever purpose for payment you want. Um, anyway, continuing. On Wednesday, asked if he had confidence in Getz, House Minority Whip Steve 
Scalise responded, We've heard a lot of stories. I mean, obviously, I've read the media reports, but there's been nothing that we've seen yet from the Department of Justice. If something's going on, obviously, we'll find out about it. Right now, it's hard to speculate on rumors, but if something really formal happens from the justice, we would, of course, react and take action. Presumably, they'd take him off of oversight of the... Uh, Department of Justice. Uh, yeah, one would think. One would definitely think that that would be the, your first step, is maybe, hey, let's not have this guy in charge of the people investigating him. Well, apparently, uh, the MLB didn't realize what happened to the naughty little... Is this? It goes right into another story. Yeah. It literally goes story. right into another story. It has nothing to do with the MLB. There, there is, like, no, like, even signature nope. for the... For the for, for, the, for the author or anything, it goes right into another story. Way to go, Vanity Fair, you bunch of hacks. Yeah, at least they get good headlines, though. Oh, they really do. I mean, that... That, that first paragraph was rock solid. I mean, it really wanted me, made me want to read the rest of the article. Especially when you can put stuff into legitimate media and say, royally fucked in your article. Yeah, I, I'm not... I don't know how that worked, but... I read it. So, you know, this guy is basically trying to get pussy using Venmo is basically what I got from this article. And he's just a crappy individual to begin with. And uh, if him and Tiger Woods hit the golf course, I'm sure they'd give a new meaning to playing nine holes. That's all I got to say. Uh, <laughs> oh, I think, wow. Well, you know, I'm sure that it's hard to be your representative and sometimes you just want to pay for company. And I think that's what he's mainly claiming that he had done. He wasn't paying for sex. He was paying for companionship. Com companionship. Companionship. I'll tell you what. I worked with hookers. I could find a better companion with a homeless guy outside of a McDonald's. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. That's a, you know, you want to you want to you want to be with somebody just because you want to be with them, and then have the sun rise and fall on you. Buy a homeless guy something to eat. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you will be the golden goose. You it, it will be as if you approach him. It will not be a cheeseburger in your hand. It'll be a chalice, like, <laughs> and it's a lot cheaper than a prostitute. And you know, if somebody catches you. You're a good Samaritan, not a sex crazed guy. I yeah, mean, yeah. I, I can actually kind of attest to that a little bit because uh, there was a short period of time where I was actually doing vehicle repossessions. And I did this in Baltimore, Maryland, Washington, D.C., and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Those were the three, three places that we really hit. And I'll tell you this if you want to know where a fucking car is in Baltimore, Maryland, buy a hooker a coffee. If I believe it. Oh yeah, on cold nights we'd get go to freaking Royal Farms and we'd get a bunch of cough, black coffees and a bag of sugars and creamers and we'd go give them to the hookers. And then we like these are the kind of cars we're looking for. Boom. They'll tell you yep. where, they'll tell you where grandma hides their money for a coffee. They don't care. Yep. Mhm. Mm <laughs> uh, but you had you had I mean you you had a more intimate relationship with the ladies of the evening and we know. <laughs> Not really, not really. I mean, uh, I was just like their brother. That was it. I, I saw what kind of drama ensued when male employees would get involved with the girls that danced and 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 you know, turn tricks, and uh, and I was not going to be that guy. That that I I saw enough. I saw enough unfold behind the dressing room curtain. I was just like, nope, I will never be like that. Mm -mm. Well, I no, think no, no, no. I followed this story, I don't know, for the last week, week and a half. And I think what's really people are getting hung up on, which wasn't covered by Vanity Fair, is one of the individuals that was supposedly paid to accompany um, the representative <laughs> across state lines was under 18. Yeah. So he took a minor uh, across state lines and may or may not have bedded the minor. Um, and that's what really we're still waiting on. Like, yeah. did, did it happen? Did it not happen? 
It happened. We're, uh... <laughs> Okay, we're taking a commercial break right now. Uh, we're not actually going to take a commercial break because we're live streaming on YouTube, but we're going to pick up right now. So if you do listen to us on our uh, audio platforms, uh, you will be hearing me talking about uh, Anchor right now, but uh, we're not going to subject you to that. Let's go right back into it with our next story. So now we're talking about a popular North Carolina teacher killed trying to rob a Mexican cartel member. I mean, that is, what, going full retard right there. Well, I can think of some, <laughs> some reasons that it might have happened that he would still be the hero of the story. Like, maybe the cartel ripped off one of his students and he was trying to help the student and didn't know who he was messing with. I'm just saying, you know, we don't have to crucify the guy without hearing the story. Well, but, but one of the things we do... You obviously have just grossly missed the point of this entire podcast. We 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 completely crucify the guy before we read the story, and then we backpedal and go, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but sometimes we do ask Buck. Buck, given the the the, the, uh, the title of the story, what do you think this, this story is going to be about? So we've heard Sadar now say that it's some kind of romantic tragedy where the teacher was trying to do a uh, UPN made for TV movie story. <laughs> what do you think? I think that uh, he was trying to buy drugs and because he was trying to cope with his life of being an underappreciated hack inside of a high school in North Carolina because they religiously teach, uh, treat their teachers like shit. And uh, during this, uh, during this, hypothetical drug deal the uh, cartel member tried to you know stiff him on the check and dude was like fuck you i'm taking my drugs and everything you have give me your shit and uh got arrested for robbing the guy oh no he didn't get arrested he got his ass dead oh well <laughs> well then there then then boom instead of take the whole story change nothing except for the arrested part change to killed well I'm gonna... I would just like to say I enjoy living with rose-colored glasses. Thank you guys very much. Well, if you, since you're uh, since you're here and you're playing a very good Robin Quivers to our uh, Howard Stern, why don't you uh, continue with the next story? A popular Union County teacher, described by family and friends as a devoted father, teacher, and coach, was fatally wounded wounded in a shootout when he and his brother-in-law tried to rob members of a Mexican drug cartel, Alamance County. Uh, Sheriff Terry Johnson said Wednesday, Barney Dale Harris, 40, taught Spanish and was head coach of the boys varsity basketball and track teams at Union Academy Charter School in Monroe, according to his family and the school. He was found dead April 8th at the be in the bedroom of an al almanac? Alamance. Alamance. Okay. I'm, I'm guessing Alamance County mobile home that Johnson had called a drug stash house. Alamance County is east of Greensboro along Interstates 85 and 40, 55 miles west of Raleigh, and 115 miles from Charlotte. Nobody cares. If you want to find it on the map to you know, no, find I, the drug I'll, house. I'll just Google I'm it. I'm just, I'm reading. I'll you just, told me to read. I'll just Google the town. I don't need, I don't need, I don't, I don't need a Continue news article on. to give me directions. Continuing on. <laughs> Just before 1 a.m. on April 8th, Alamance County 911 received multiple calls of shots fired at a mobile home in, on Wyatt Road at Green Level, the sheriff's office said. Officers found two individuals with gunshot wounds. Harris was shot numerous times during what the sheriff described as an old western shootout between two criminal enterprises. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. All right. Going straight. One of the enterprises being Harris and his brother-in-law, according to Johnson. Well, so much for my made-for-TV movie. <laughs> <laughs> the Mexican cartel versus high school Spanish teachers. Who apparently is the one that knocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know if he was making. He was cooking. We don't. Okay, we don't know if he was cooking. <laughs> Maybe he was just Spanishing. He was the Spanish teacher. Mexican cartel, there could be a connection. Buck, how did you learn to speak Spanish? Whorehouses. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
so we don't I know. Mean, <laughs> I mean, I just it was a, a whorehouses. I mean, like literally, uh, you want to learn you want to learn a foreign language, go find yourself a hot chick. Just start asking questions. I learned the whole language in six weeks. Okay, I was looking for visited Mexico lived in mexico he doesn't even need to do that i walked out of a block one time and came back and he was speaking swedish i know it, it's <laughs> i'm totally jealous of your language abilities buck been through looked out satan's kook that's swedish for your wife smells like satan's cock <laughs> <laughs> what was that swedish inmate in our jail for officer raz i honestly don't remember he was a diaper sniper, and that's why I learned how to say terrible and gross things to him in his native tongue. So that way he couldn't file grievances on me, and it worked. What was that? It was push my car. That was Albanian for uh, for suck my cock. Yeah. <laughs> Should we just list the languages you don't speak? No, because I'm, like, I only speak fluent Spanish and fluent English now. Everything else is just fragments. Order a pizza or get my shit kicked in. Like, I, I can start a fight in a lot of languages. I just can't back it up with anything anymore. So run, I, I run over their feet. That. Yeah, you could run over their feet. Ram at their shins. Well, you know, if I if I were to pick a fight in a foreign language here in America... I could rely on the masses to play Good Samaritan while they are, you know, keeping the guy from beating down the guy in the wheelchair. They'll never know that I'm deserving of the ass kicking, I guess. But, <laughs> you know. Continue, Sadar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like, just, yeah, move along. <clears throat> okay. Harris and his brother in law, Stephen Alexander Stewart Jr. of Wadesboro. What a name. <laughs> Stephen Alexander Stewart Jr. <laughs> Dude's got three first names. <laughs> now he's got two middle names. Ending on, uh, continuing on. Entered the home waiting for a cartel member to arrive so they could rob him of drugs and money, the sheriff said. Always a smart decision. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was actually like 30% right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you 40. I'm going to give you 40. All right. Like said, are. <laughs> when Alonzo Beltran Lara arrived, he was taken outside, bound by his feet, and shot twice in the head, execution style, according to Johnson, who described Lara as a cartel drug runner. Lara was alive when the officers arrived and was pronounced dead at the hospital, the sheriff said. On Sunday, Stewart Jr., 32, was arrested and charged with first degree burglary and first degree murder, according to the sheriff. Stewart Jr. is being held without bond at the Alamance County Detention Center. In August, Harris was charged in New Hanover County with a misdemeanor weapons charge related to carrying a concealed gun, public records show. At the time of his death, a court date was pending. At a news conference Wednesday, Johnson said officers found over 30 shell casings in and outside the mobile home when, where Harris was killed. A, and bullet holes in three other mobile homes. The trailer looked like it had been ransacked, the sheriff said. They're, they were looking for money or drugs or both. A bag containing 1.2 kilos of cocaine, or about 2.6 pounds, and about $7,000 in cash was also found, the sheriff. Well, I guess they missed that when they were ransacked. The <laughs> they apparently didn't ransack it too goddamn <laughs> well. <laughs> I don't think the cartel was interested in robbery. I don't think that's why they went back. Just... That wasn't their MO. No. <laughs> All right. I mean, don't get me wrong, the cartel likes money, but $7,000 is kind of like pissing in the wind. <laughs> Who cares? I mean, I Well, think, I uh, mean, like to them, it's no, not wor shit. It's not it like they 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 find a penny, they pick it up, but it ain't worth going back to somewhere that has been busted already. Like the seven thousand dollars isn't even worth it to a petty fucking criminal. That's when you cut your losses. You're like, damn. I could have had seven thousand dollars. <laughs> I would make a horrible criminal. I'm just saying. I, I thought. I thought the. Te could you guys imagine being in high school and finding out that your high one of your teachers was killed in a cartel shootout? 
I would have to imagine that the students probably suspect it because the students always seem to know a lot about what's going on. Yeah. I mean, those there there were kids in that school who knew that their Spanish teacher was getting down before he'd go down. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just telling And he was a football coach. I'm telling you. Nah, nah, basketball that, and track. <clears throat> oh, whatever. Like, that guy, that guy was... He was moving. He was teaching. He was selling. He was pushing. Like, that guy was all... He had his fingers in all sorts of honey pots. You know, I gotta tell you, I, I'm barreling down on 40, and I think I'm still the most innocent person I know. I, I can't imagine. Anyway... In conclusion, to this day as sheriff, sorry, returning to the article, to th to this day as well, sheriff. I didn't think you were the sheriff. Uh, I just wanted to clarify for our listeners. Just the deputy. <clears throat> to this day as sheriff, I'll tell you right now, I'm still worried about some retaliation because the Mexican cartels, they don't forget. They're going to pay back somebody somewhere, he said. And that concerns me greatly as sheriff of this county. I had no idea that the Mexican cartel was in North Carolina. Mexican cartel is anywhere the Mexican cartel wants to be. Yep. Mexican cartels probably got people in Uganda. I mean, like, <laughs> no, nah, those those <laughs> those those guys those guys they get around. Wow. They get around. Well. Let's 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 get away from teachers getting snuffed. <laughs> Go to a country that likes to snuff its citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, this is being uh, reported by Variety, another popular and exceptional news source. But nevertheless, China launches hotline to report online comments that distort history or deny its cultural excellence. China's got a snitch app. Wait a minute. Can can we read that again? China launches hotline to report online comments that distort history or deny its cultural excellence. Oh, okay. So, report snitches get stitches. In the no, digital sense. no. Apparently, the snitches are going to get rewarded. Right. And, okay. And those that are snitching on are going to disappear. All right. Yeah. Took, I, took me a minute. All about social, your social credit. Yeah. All right. You want me to continue again? I think she's doing a good job. I don't got to read it. <clears throat> yep, you've been elected. You don't got to listen to me stutter through it, so this is by all means. Should have brought back another drink. <laughs> China's internet regulator has launched a hotline for citizens to report online comments that defame the ruling Communist Party and its approved description of history ahead of the party's upcoming... 100th anniversary. Well, there you go. They, they're just worried about impressions for the anniversary. Oh, is that all? Mm. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. The new hotline will enable internet users to stop the spread of mistaken opinions and create a good public opinion atmosphere to pave the way for the Ju uh, July 1st occasion, the Cyber si Cyberspace Administration of China said in a notice. People can also send in tip-offs via the CAC's website and app. For a while now, some people with ulterior motives have spread historically nihilistic false statements online, maliciously distorting, slandering, and denying party, national, and military history. <clears throat> Excuse me. In an attempt to confuse people's thinking, the notice said, <clears throat> false news fake news fake news not false news fake news <laughs> mm. we hope that most internet users will play an active role in supervising society and enthusiastically reporting harmful information holy shit holy shit wow but i mean i can tell you that yeah, you know, we spent uh sadar and i we both spent some time in china and this does not surprise me well, I think it's totally in line with what was it about three years ago now that they launched the social social credit system where you have to be in such good standing with the party in order to be able to survive. Well, send your kids to good schools, be able to rent a taxi, find an apartment. I mean, 
if you don't pull the party line, you don't get to live. Yeah. I mean, this is what was what was the like we went by a park at one point and they had these um like stone tablets, like pillar type things that had like the different um virtues of of communism or socialism. And it it was funny cuz they were all like in like all uniform except you got to the last one where it said freedom. It was in a smaller font. <laughs> it was literally yeah. it was in a much smaller font than the rest of them. <laughs> And it was just kind of like, yep, there it is. That's China. <laughs> you know, I, I get that China's a totally different culture. And I cannot conceive of living in a country with 5,000 years of recorded history and what kind of nationalism that that would garner for its people. But I, my first thought here is... Well, I really don't like my neighbors. I'm going to report them for being bad communists. My boss yeah. didn't give me a raise. Well, that's because he's not a good communist. <laughs> truly. Right. I mean, truly. Right. Truly. <laughs> I mean, truly, that's what it comes down to. And and you're 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 really, you know, delving into the whole Fahrenheit 451 concept here. You know, oh yeah, <laughs> everything is monitored. We had to we had to use VPNs just to use the internet while we were over there, which were illegal. But we, you know, I guess we did break the law while we were in China. I don't want to really admit that too loudly, but we kind of did. You just you just admitted that on the internet. Well, I'm not planning on going back. <laughs> what to the internet? <laughs> 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 A little late there. <laughs> Anyway. There is no going back once you enter the internet. No. Well, I know. That's why I'm like, you just told the internet that we did something. Are you going well, to are you, are you I, 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 use the app and report me? No, I know that you're a hor horrible communist. <laughs> that's right. I'm a, your your no. social credit rating is, like, tanked, man. But what is my capitalist score? I would, I would say that you're a pretty high-scoring capitalist. All right. You buy the products and support the support the infrastructure. But the products I buy for all are from China. Right. <laughs> well, you're a good global capitalist. Global capitalism. Yeah, communism works when it's built on the back of capitalism. Pretty much. Right, China. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that one went right over my head. I'm not smart, and I went to public school. Reading on. Yep. Where did I stop? Historically, ne nihilistic information in official rhetoric is content that incites doubt in the party's account of the past. Well, we certainly would, wouldn't want anybody doubting the history of communism in China. No, no. <clears throat> the move comes in the wake of recent firestorms of online criticism sparked by nationalist social media users who dug up years old and often since deleted remarks deemed slanderous to China from public figures and brands. In the past month, such incidents have engulfed everyone from Oscar frontrunner Chloe Zhao to Chinese ten uh, tennis champ Li Na. Li Na and brands from Adidas to H&M with flame wars pushing to an ever higher profile by celebrity par participation. With the new hotline, internet users can flex similar muscles with direct government support. It will accept four types of content complaints, distortions of history, attacks on the party's leadership, guiding ideology, ide um, guiding ideology principles or policies, the defamation of heroes and martyrs, and denials of the excellence of traditional Chinese culture, revolutionary culture, and advanced socialist culture. Yeah, so here, the, 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 here's a here's a big difference for the people that don't really have never really traveled or, or done anything. So, you know, other cultures see things, see the world in different ways. I know, weird concept, but. 
uh, whereas the United States, we're in the grand scheme of things, we're young. Oh, very young. We're very young. We're we're teenagers. Oh we, yeah. We think, oh, yeah. we're not even teenagers, man. We're still in the infancy of being a nation. We think a hundred like, years is a long time. That's just like Sadar said. Like China's got five thousand years of recorded history under their belt. We but, got two hundred years. But here's the whole thing that you got to remember. Whereas in like the American culture, we're like America. And we act like we're, we're like this big nationalist, like we love our country and everything. Bullshit. Bullshit. We don't. We don't love our country. <laughs> we love ourselves. And, and we do everything in our power to for our own benefit. Uh, China. I think you need to explain what you mean there. I understand what you explain. Okay, then, but... then, then, then interpret for me. Because you've interpreted for me for 20 years. I think what you're trying to say is we love our country because of the freedom that it provides us because our our shining light up on the hill as Americans is I do what I want. I do what I want. I mean, it, it, Florida man is kind of like synonymous with America. It's an extreme, but yeah, it's a caricature of what it means to be American. And we mean that in the nicest way possible, right, Raz? We do. But, <laughs> but, and y'all jokes aside, we do see things as though it's... It, we, we, we act like we are very patriotic and everything, and then during times of crisis, we, we can be. But for the most part, we are very... Um, what's best for me? Or what's best for my little community? Whereas Chinese culture is, what is best for China? Because China doesn't care. You, it, China, China does not care. Nothing phases China because China says, "I've been here for five thousand years. I'll be here long after you're gone." Okay, I think what you're talking about there is more the difference in, in, and it's not unique to the United States, but in a lot of Western cultures, the individual is important. The you know the individual has value. The individual is the focus. We're raised to be you know I'm. I'm unique. I'm important. I'm a delicate flower. I'm, I am. I'm a delicate flower, and I matter, and my existence here matters. Whereas many Eastern cultures, China included, the individual comes secondary to the needs of the collective. And that's just how people are enculturated in their society. They are raised to believe that their value is lesser than the value of the whole. What's, but, what's Mexican culture like, Buck? Um, mañana. In the morning? Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. That's that's the best way I can summarize it. That's why Mexico will always be there. Because they have mañana. And, uh, and that is the whole mantra of the people there. No matter what happens. No matter what, you know. Good for me. Good for you. Good for us. We'll figure it out. Manana. That's that's how Mexico rolls. And that's why I liked it there. Thank you, Buck. You're and, welcome. Sorry, I went on a little like lesson rant, but all right. It's all right. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the um going back to the article, the CAC notice did not explain what punishments would be in store for violators. China already frequently detains and jails people for online speech deemed politically inappropriate. For instance, last week, authorities in Jiangsu province detained a 19-year-old for his insulting online comments about Japan's 1937 invasion of Nanjing during the Second Sino-Japanese War. Earlier this year, authorities introduced new legal clauses stating that those who insult the country's national heroes and martyrs can be, in, uh, can be sentenced up to three years in prison. And uh, let's just face reality here. Chinese prison is no joke, and it's not someplace I want to be. It, it's probably a lot like Mexican prison, except um, less, with less apathy. <laughs> no, uh, you know what? I mean, like, I've been to a Mexican prison, and it was it was pretty horrible, but I still wouldn't even want to imagine the fresh hell that would be waiting for somebody in a Chinese prison. Like that, I really envision that being like a literal fucking hole in the ground. Like that's, that's my, I, I don't know what it is for real, 
but I don't imagine that you could get anything that even remotely would be considered humane treatment in a Chinese Chinese correctional institution. I was terrified of that, of ending up in a Chinese prison while I was there. Um, I, I was terrified of it, and it almost happened twice. Well, it almost happened once, and we were scared twice. I, I, I'll go into those stories in detail some other time. <laughs> but, Buck, there is a story that we're going to go into next that um, I'm, I'm kind of curious to get your take on it. So, okay. So let's sit back and listen to the delicate tones of Sadar as she continues on with her reading from this travel noir story. Sadar. American Airlines is apologizing after allegedly telling Rosalind Singleton, a two-time cancer survivor, that she could not board a flight from Los Angeles to Charlotte because of a hoodie that read, Fuck Cancer. In a statement to Travel Noir, American Airlines said that its policies prohibit clothing that displays offensive statements and inappropriate language from being worn on board. In this instance, our team should have taken the broader context of the message displayed on the customer's shirt into consideration when explaining our policies. Our team has reached out to learn more about Ms. Singleton's experience, offer our apologies, and reaffirm our support for her efforts to fight cancer. The apology comes after Singleton took to Instagram after being told her hoodie was inappropriate. Tell me why the guy from American Airlines just told me if I don't put my sweatshirt on that I can't get on the plane, she asked. Which doesn't make a lick of sense, but we know what she meant. Yeah, I did read that right, right? You did, you did. Okay. So, what do you think of that, Buck? <clears throat> you know, um, this is one of those areas where I have to look at it and say a rule's a rule. And you can't, you can't, it's not anything against somebody battling cancer. It's against the language. And the person who's working there has been given the authority and, you know, the responsibility. The discretion. The, the the discretion and the responsibility to ensure that those rules are that those rules are upheld, and the second he starts making ex- exceptions, he begins to open himself up to a hard hard road uh, with with any other person that might have a problem with any other rule. They you know if he bends for one person on one rule, he's gonna he's gonna all he's gonna be subject to that. So I'm gonna give this guy whoever made the edict that. The sweatshirt wasn't allowed. I'm going to kind of give him the benefit of the doubt, and unless there's something else in the article that says he was being a dick to the lady, but you know, th- this to me is is a description of somebody doing their job to the letter. That's that's really what it boils down to. You know, it's no surprise that a company like American Airlines or any other airline would have a uh, a stipulation or rule that's that that bars people from wearing clothing with offensive language on it. And as I'm sure all three of us can sit here and agree, the word fuck is, you know, pretty obscene in most cases. You know, yeah, the context should be taken into consideration, which is why the woman wasn't banned from flying immediately. She was just asked to remove the T-shirt or the sweatshirt. Yeah. You know, it, See, it, it, I, I don't think that, you know, I, if I were wearing a shirt that said fuck MS... And somebody were to say, hey, you know, we've got kids that come into this place. We've got families. We've got people that are offended by that word. You think you could just take that shirt off or turn it inside out or something like that for the sake of everybody in here? And I would I would just kind of snicker a little bit. I'd be like, yeah, no problem. And I would do it. You know, that. but that's, that's just my take on it. You know, do you have a similar outlook? Uh, I actually kind of say... I'm, I'm a lot meaner with this stuff. Okay, so here's my thing. They have a rule that says you cannot have explicit wording on there. Okay, that makes perfect sense. It's anybody can fly a plane. or not, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. No, anybody can fly on their plane. And, you know, I make it a point because, you know, newsflash people, I edit and upload the podcast. Uh, there's an explicit tag on the podcast. It warns people there is explicit language. 
even on the, the my old podcast, uh, the Mount Moon Review, there was a, a disclaimer at the beginning saying that we try to keep it family friendly, but there are times adult language and adult situations do come in. It, it was a goddamn Pokemon podcast. For God's sakes, I'm a man child, I know, but it, it happened. So we had a disclaimer on there. We wanted people to know that, you know, if you're going to listen to this with with your kids, you'll be aware there I might accidentally drop an F-bomb. I do it quite often. I didn't on that podcast. I was pretty good on that one. People have to admit that. I was pretty good. But nevertheless, I, I, I swear. Everyone knows I swear. I've been told at work I'm very blunt, which means I swear a lot. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we worked in a prison for, for how long? I mean, that was kind of like the way it went. It, it is. And, you know, I, I, cancer aside, I, who cares? I mean, <laughs> do you have to have a shirt that says, fuck cancer? I mean, I, I, I want a shirt that says, fuck hot bitches. What's the difference? Well, I mean, you know, owning it's stuff like that is one thing. I got, lots of, I got lots of t-shirts that have lots of different language on it, but I also know where I can really, like, wear those. See, like I, I actually hate clothing that has text on it. Like, I I don't like like shirts that are like, why am I advertising a company or something like that? And I I, I genuinely equate people's intelligence level to the size of the Disney character on their shirt. Uh, but I I have some shirts here. Like I uh, one of my favorite uh, YouTube personalities, uh, abroad in Japan, he has a merchandise and it it looks like a sake label. It says uh, for fuck sake. I love that shirt. I don't wear that shirt out of this house. <laughs> I wear it on the weekends. <laughs> right. But so so you do share the same aspect that, or the same the same viewpoint that I do. If somebody tells you to take the damn shirt off, take off the shirt. No. My my viewpoint is why the hell did you even wear that in public to begin with? Well, there you go. Have some same difference. Goddamn just common courtesy for society. There you What's go. What's your opinion? My opinion is I'm disappointed that the um, the article doesn't include a picture of the shirt because my opinion is going to be dictated whether it says fuck cancer, F-U-C-K, or like the article says, F star star K cancer. If it's, if it's censored on the shirt, then well, it's censored. Well, her Instagram thing's on here. Let's take a quick peek at it, shall we? So, we are in the airport. Y'all see what I got on. Tell me why the guy from American Airlines just told me if I don't put a sweatshirt Survey on, says. That I can't. Survey says it's not censored. And the guy from American Airlines is saying that because that's their policy. You're in public around children. Well, fuck, fuck around Come children. What, what if a goddamn yeah. grown ass woman or man doesn't like seeing fucks on the shirt? Well, I don't, really don't care about what a grown-ass man wants to see. Or maybe I don't want to see your caricature on your shirt. Your caricature? Look at that. Look, he's such a heteronormative cis white gender male. I am offended. Actually, <laughs> I would just say it's false advertising. We both know his beard isn't that well-kempt in, in, uh, in real life. <laughs> in case you're wondering, I am wearing a shirt with my own face on it. <laughs> Your caricature. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm sorry you had cancer, but fuck you. That, I, I'm going to kind of roll with that as well. You know? And, and, you know, what you wear in your own house on your own time, that is, that is absolutely your business. But you the mean, second you start Why is this guy telling me I can't wear other it? People, no. Why are you telling me I can't wear it? Because it's my fucking job. Shut up, bitch. Get out of here. Okay. Pretty much. So, I, I, t I said at the beginning of the, the, the episode that we uh, we were going to name this felonious douchebaggery part two. Um, we changed that, and and for once, I, I didn't come up with the title. Buck didn't come up with the title. Sadar came up with the title. Woot, woot. So we named this episode. This is this is again. This is episode forty six. You're in the fake army now, <laughs> and this is freaking great man arrested for creating fake army union aren't yeah see this is why i wanted you to read these i can't read 
Los Angeles. A Chinese man was arrested for creating a fake U.S. Army unit and convincing immigrants that joining the squad was a path to citizenship. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yu Peng Deng, 51, allegedly gave his recruits military uniforms, had them parade in Los Angeles suburb, and took them to a decommissioned USS Midway aircraft carrier, which is a museum in San Diego. Deng charged them more than charged more than 100 fellow Chinese nationals a fee of between $300 and $450 to join the fake army unit, according to Los Angeles District Attorney's Office. All right, this is extreme douchebaggery. It is, but it's funny. He called his bogus squad the U.S. Military slash Military Special Forces Reserve Unit, or MSF are for short and he gave himself the lofty title supreme commander <laughs> ah! aside from telling recruits they be that belonging to the unit was a path to u.s citizenship dang also urged them to pay him cash for higher military rank according to prosecutors he also allegedly provided them with fake documents and phony military identification cards dang a resident of los angeles suburb of mont mont el monte El Monte, was arrested on Tuesday by sheriff's deputies. He was charged with theft by false pretenses, manufacturing deceptive government documents, and counterfeit of official government seal. Dang faces up to eight years in prison if convicted. He is scheduled to be arraigned on Wednesday and is being held on half a million dollars bail. Jane Robinson, a spokesperson for the district attorney's office, declined to comment on how Dang was caught. All the details and evidence will come out at the preliminary hearing, she said. Oh, man. This is bad. <laughs> All I can do is picture a whole bunch of cops yelling this guy's name. Dang! Dang! <laughs> Dang! Dang! <laughs> well, it's it's funny because they're... Damn, there's a damn right, Dang! There's a picture of them, of his little unit here. And they're, they're, they've they got, you know, modern TDU uniforms. Uh, except one dude is wearing, oh, I'm sorry, two of them are wearing, three, 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 I see three. Three are wearing berets. One of them's wearing a drill sergeant's, uh, you know, big old brim hat. And then there's Dang himself, who looks like he sh just came straight off of a North Korea ma uh, propaganda poster. I mean, he's got the, the, the uniform on, but he's got that scared look in his eye. <laughs> it, it's bad. But how do you how do you convince people that you're 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 the you're the army? Because he took recent immigrants. People were trying to immigrate from China. You know, we just left another article talking about um the, what it's like to live the in The cultural China. differences, yeah. yeah. But, you know, we have also met people living in China who wanted to, were desperate to immigrate to the United States and struggled with that, you know, being able to or not being able to. These people at least made it to the shore and now they find somebody who speaks their language and looks like them and is telling them, I'm going to help you become an American citizen, all you have to do is give me $300 and, and do what I tell you to for a couple of years and I'll get you a citizenship. Okay? I mean, this is like super douchebaggery. Super, super well, douchebaggery. The guy's probably going right off the aspect that you were talking about earlier. It's for the country. And mm -hmm. that's how they were raised. So he gets over here and he's like, your country needs you. You will join and in exchange, you will get citizenship. And people are probably just like, okay, that's the way it's done here. When in Rome, let's do it. Uh, it, it this is rough. I mean, this is rough. <laughs> I, I, I genuinely feel bad for all these people. So do I. And I, I, I think it's telling that there was no article or no mention in the article about any type of lawsuit against Dang. I mean, are these people, are they going to be able to stay? Do they know that they have a right in this country to fight to get their money back? I, I probably feeling, not. I have a feeling it's probably already gone. <laughs> well, there's that. 
there's that and it's it's hard to get blood from a stone yeah uh, this is just horrible um hopefully this guy actually does see the inside of a jail cell yeah i really do hope so but jeez, <laughs> i wonder how he was caught I, I really do kind of want to know but i also want to know like if they, they, well they were buying ranks that means something but you know tdus and 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 boots and, and just uh, you know the basic uniform isn't cheap well in in the uh picture i know our listeners can't see it but it looks like they're standing in front of an official looking building so he's paid for a building he's paid for cameras he's paid for seals and flags and everything that goes into that i, this... I kind of get the impression that this guy is not doing this for profit but he's more doing it because he's got people saluting him. You know, mm -hmm. kind of like a police impersonator. They're all happy to just be seen as somebody in authority. And that's kind of what I, I'm, 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 you know, without actually, you know, psychoanalyzing the guy, I kind of get that impression. That's probably what this is about. He's in charge of something. He's got people calling him sir. And, you know, yes, Supreme Commander. <laughs> <laughs> We've known people like that, man. I mean, like, they, they get a uniform on, and they think that they're just something something special, and now he's got a whole following of people. I can... Uh, there There's some validity to that theory there, Raz. I mean, you, you take out the word army and add the word cult, and this is like, oh, okay, I get it now. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's totally true. Yeah. Stay away from the grape Kool-Aid yeah really do i mean that's bad well this is bad too man <laughs> that was full of cyanide <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know what the supreme commander's gonna ask of his people oh god you gotta martyr yourself for the country here folks oh, <laughs> mm. oh. I'm, I'm i'm honestly kind of surprised that it's only up to eight years i would have thought that you know uh, impersonating military and theft by deception and I would just would have thought it'd be more than eight years I mean there's I mean mostly he's getting charged with um, like forgery I mean really that's what he that's I'm looking at the charges I think he's mostly being charged with forgery now do you the question is do you think he could have gotten away with it if he instead of calling himself the special forces super commander reserve unit or whatever it was if he just called himself a militia I see that's the thing I don't think he's being charged with anything other than creating the the fake documents So Oh really? Well yeah I mean it says he's um he's charged with theft by pretenses so that's for stealing the money manufacturing deceptive government documents so that's the forgery and counterfeit of official government seal so yeah he's not getting charged with anything related to impersonating i which is probably what you know being the fact that he didn't say you know where the the 82nd airborne you know he, he made up a unit he made up a rank so he's not impersonating that dude figured out how to cheese the I, system I, I, he cheesed it <laughs> you know what i would i would try to bust him for like starting a an army inside of the united states you're allowed like, to do that I, damn it there's militias everywhere yeah i know yeah, you, he's right yeah i know you're allowed to do that that's why i said damn it that's why i said damn it yeah you're you're totally people do that all the time no this dude totally gamed the system is if he if if he I'm, could have just done what he was doing without forging anything, he could have got away with it. I'm in awe. If it wasn't for those meddling kids. <laughs> now I just want to know how he got caught all the worse. I know, right? Like, got, did, somebody, did one of his officers try going into a um, PX to get a discount or something? Try to get on base or something? Yeah. That's possible. But who knows? Uh, Buck, do you have any you have anything else for us this week, my friend? No, not really. Not really. I mean, you know, things are uh, things are things are things here. I mean, yeah, 
not a lot happens in cripple world you know what i mean <laughs> oh jesus christ <laughs> Well, Sadar, thank you for joining us this week. I know this is this is a this is a strange strange thing, and our, our viewers aren't really accustomed to it. Um, but we we were talking about having a, a an episode where Buck and I just weren't there, and we had you and caregiver Katie do one, and we weren't going to say anything. We we're even going to mention it, and we were never going to speak of it again, and just, <laughs> just let it happen. <laughs> but you know, th this is this is a happy compromise. So maybe, yeah, I think it's a good compromise. Maybe we'll do it in the future. Um, but, you know, again, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to our po our podcast on so many platforms, Buck. Oh, my Lord. The amount of platforms we're on is kind of ridiculous. You can also subscribe on our YouTube channel. If you do like our video, hit that notification bell so you get notified when we go live on Facebook with our, with our recordings. Uh, you can subscribe on just about every single podcast platform. Uh, Apple iTunes, Spotify, you name it. Uh, just leave us a good review, too. I mean, that'd be awesome. I mean, really, that'd just be awesome. Yeah. Tell a friend. I mean, I... Tell a friend. Yep, tell a friend. Check out uh, Buck series on our YouTube channel, Better Than Bad. You can just look for the Mount Moon crew, look for the Social Liability Podcast, or look for Better Than Bad with Buck. One way or another, you'll find our, our channel. That being said, folks, thank you for listening, and we'll catch you on the next episode of the Social Liability Podcast.